live episode on this Thursday evening. We are we are back. Match Chat Live is back. Uh, and Match Chat Live is, as always, a live event. Uh, I could obviously record this on YouTube and put it out there. Um, but we want you to get involved, ask some questions wherever you are. This is primarily on Twitter, also on Facebook and on YouTube. So, um, yeah, if you have any thoughts or comments, etc., or questions, just put them up in the chat and we'd be, we'd be happy to answer that. So today uh, I'm uh, extremely excited to um, have uh, someone on uh, who I think um, was well ahead of his time uh, with the maths and technology uh, teaching and I've been to a couple of his workshops at the LaSalle maths conferences, scribbled loads and loads of notes, even blogged about it. Uh, I've always been excited and he's definitely extremely popular with it. Uh, community of online tutors this little niche thing because uh, we are kind of tech geeks and teaching geeks so right <laughs> right up our street um so finally after after nearly a year got got hold of him and and here we are so um yeah welcome to match and live douglas well thank you very much i'm the generation of course that, that has seen this revolution right from the start half my teaching career was just me and a piece of chalk and then the BBC B came along, and boy, did we think that was fun. And with just three or four lines of code, you could draw a graph, plugged it into the TV set, and off we went. And you could write on the telly uh, with, with a whiteboard marker. Uh, and, and that's how it all started. And of course, we're still doing the same things now with the big screen or even with your tiny screen. The, the shift of technology has gone very much from the teachers to the students, because for most of the time it was the teachers that had the tech, they had the big board, they had the computer at the front. Now um, students have got uh, incredible power in their, in their uh, phones. Yeah. I don't know which area you'd like to look at first. There's so many sides to um, technology that uh, I, I find very exciting. But Atul was interested in the application of Google Earth to start with. Yeah, that'd be great actually. So I'm just going to share the screen. Um, Google Earth starts off like this, as you possibly know, um, and I'm just going to put in here what it's going to search for. I want the steepest, because if you're doing a, a lesson on gradient, it's lots of good ideas about how steep things are. So something that is very steep is a road that claims to be the steepest road in the world. There's a road in Wales now that is ch challenging that, so we'll see. Anyway, here it is. So you go to that and you search. Off it goes. Mm. Now, some of you may be looking at this on uh, iPads or tablets or phones, and unfortunately the, th the tool I'm about to use only works when you're viewing this on a computer. All these options along the top here are not on the version that runs on iPads and tablets, which is a great pity, because what I want to do, this is the road that is so steep, I want to use this option here, which is add a path. So you click on that, and you click at the beginning and you click at the end and there's your path. Now it, you're defining the path, let's bring that in here let's call it street and let's give it a bit, it's white to start with so it's not very visible so we'll make it red and width of 4 okay mm. alright, now that's much easier to see and what you'll notice is that this object has been defined and it ends up down here and there's an extraordinary right-click option to show elevation profile. Now, I often have a grumble about Google because, you know, they're incredibly clever. And if you think what they've given us in terms of their search engine and everything else, um, but clearly this wasn't designed by mathematics teachers because th those scales are different. You've got um, a different scale here to a different scale here. So it doesn't actually uh, yeah. reflect what it actually looks like. Um, but there is that one. it is actually quite fun also to have a look at, at um, YouTube. So let's do that now. Mm. Let's put in Baldwin Street. I should have done that in YouTube. Not in the other one. So put here Baldwin yeah, that's Street. Old. Live maths. 
And here are lots of images, I and mean, you can watch these videos if you like, but you know, it is pretty steep. But it's, it might be worth just sort of thinking, what, what is the angle of it? There's this, here's this nice, <laughs> nice picture of a, of a house. Uh. It's, n it's only 18 degrees. Hmm. And yet it is incredibly steep to, to walk up and, and run down, as they do frequently. That's the sort of steep end of things, and if you're talking about um, gradients, then it's very important to have a good feel for what it means. <coughs> um, I'm going to go to um, another part of YouTube. I'll just close that down. You, 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 you can go up and down like that. Oh, that's right. really cool. That's really, yeah. really good, yeah. Um, and you can also view it as a flyby. And there's the street. Mm. Should, yeah, it goes again now. Unfortunately, it doesn't link up with the diagram down here at this point, which is one of those things it's never got around to doing, I guess. Uh, but it's a great shame that the aspect ratio isn't right, so that isn't actually a, a reasonable... You could copy it and put it into autograph or something and, and have a look, but that would take too long. Mm. It's still, it's, it's very, very good. So I'm going to go to another extreme of... Uh, Aha, uh -huh. it's all upside down. Let's get rid of that. If you double click on the N, the N it goes the right way up. So what I'm going to go now is to go to Melbourne Airport. Right. Why am I going to Melbourne Airport? Because the runway is not exactly horizontal. Now, to get all this to zoom in and out, of course, I'm using the wheel of the mouse, which is quite important. Now, again, that's missing if you're doing this on an iPad or mm. a phone. You have to go to the plus minus controls at the side. So once again, we're going to use this one and go from here to here and have a look at, the, uh, at that in. And it's called Untitled Path, Show Elevation Profile. Now, oh, wow. would you want to be landing a 747 on that? <laughs> God. Well, again, it's the problem that there is not equal aspect. There's, 130, there's about 30 metres here, and here there's about three and a half kilometres. Ah, uh, deceptive. So, yeah, that's one of those things you want to watch out for. Mm -hmm. While we're in Australia, there's the world's biggest hexagons over here. Now, see that little sticking up here and there it is My goodness. and you might say well how big is it uh, let's get the ruler out again you'll be, you won't get this I'm afraid if you're on a tablet or a phone but the, the ruler means you can go from click to here to here and it's 1.28 kilometers long so that is quite a meaty hexagon I think we'll agree and there's another one on the inside. Yeah. Got some. So if you're doing transformations, you could you could uh, transfer this into a, a graphing program and see what you've got to do to transform this one into this one. It's an enlargement and it's a rotation. Mm. It's an old aerial system from the Second World War. Right. Uh, they used to. Uh, you need very low frequencies to c to communicate with with uh, submarines in the Indian Ocean. So that's what it was for. And it's uh, the outline is still there, but the the big masts have gone. Mm. We've got a technical question, but you just answered that anyway. Uh, Ella, who is uh, who's been a math chat live doing virtual and augmented reality, actually. Oh yeah. She's just asking, does Earth Pro work on an iPad? I thought it can only be used on a desktop. Well, it does work. I mean, you can see all the images, but you haven't got those tools. Mm. I can't imagine why not, because uh, they make such a difference. Mm. Uh, what I would do now is um, suggest that if that's the biggest hexagon, where's the biggest pentagon? And they should all know, of course, that that's where it's in um, Washington, D.C. So if I was to put this in here, 
the Pentagon. The trouble with the Pentagon is that there are lots of uh, shopping malls and restaurants called the Pentagon. Here is Washington. Now, is it going to go to the right or to the left? Really good question. Have a look at the longitude and uh, think about it. That's a nice little exercise. So click, click on that and go search. And it's gone oh. that way. It's gone the. Oh, it's so cool. That's amazing. Now, what I like about this also is, is uh, in a classroom situation, to, is to have a large uh, protractor. So you slam the protractor against the screen and measure these things. You know, obviously, you could get software to measure the angles, but I think it's much more interesting. If you, you go right in here, you've even got a pentagonal or a little tea room in the middle uh, where the president has tea. Next door, it's my favourite topic of all times. What I love to do now is to say, look, you've got these... Um, now, if I press Shift and use the wheel, it's, it flattens it out. So, what are those numbers for? 19 and 15. If there's anybody listening who can tell me, now's the time. Yeah, Catherine Needle is tuned in. She's loved this. So, uh, I know the answer because I've been to your workshop before. But yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll wait for, for someone else. Yeah. Now, the, the, the 19 is interesting because it, it is, in fact, if you take this one here, it's, it's the angle in tens of degrees to magnetic north. Now, magnetic north and actual north are not the same by any means. And in Washington, D.C., they are about uh, 15 degrees out. So that's quite significant. So to, to correct for that, we just move this around a bit. And that's more like it. And that now looks like 180 plus a bit, 190. And this is 150. So a really good question to ask the students now is, well, if it's 15 on this and the plane's landing, what's going to be the number of the runway to a plane landing at the other end? And you want the answer without them going to have a look, because that's obviously <laughs> what they mm -hmm. can do. But it's a very simple little exercise, but it foxes them. It's not that difficult. All we're expecting to do is to, is to add 18 to 15 because we're looking at 180 degrees difference. So if we had 18 to 15, we 33, which is correct. Smart. So there's the Pentagon again, and, and lots of uh, lovely things. Now, as you come across the Atlantic, what, zoom. That the Earth, Google Earth actually goes beneath the surface as well, so you can have a look at the, what's going on underneath. And all these uh, Bermudas are very interesting. I've been to Bermuda once. Apparently it's surrounded by shipwrecks, because in the old days they didn't know it was there. So they were merrily coming across to America and pff, crash. Right. Yeah, you can see shipwrecks, right, on this. They've got sites. I doubt it. <laughs> That's just a, a story. Mm. Um, now, having l looked at the world's biggest pentagon, what about the world's biggest parabola? And not everybody knows where it is. They might know it's sort of down here somewhere. Um, it, it does feature on the telly every now and again. It, a good old um, Michael Portillo discovered it the other day and his railway programmes. Yeah, I love those programmes. Yeah, they're great, aren't they? Yeah. So this little bit sticking out here is called Dungeness. And there's two... Um, nuclear power stations here and you see this airport here that's Lid Airport, it's very close, that's where the, the parabola is but I'll just talk about this for a second um, now you can ask the question the other way around um, previously it was uh, you were given a number and what's the direction of the runway now here's the, here's the runway, so what do you think the number is at, the, at this end? Mm. Anybody going to tweet? Mm, yeah, I've uh, got Karina Murg. Not an answer, she's just saying so far, just wow, she's tuning in from the States. Ella's tuning in from uh, Croatia. Well, I reckon that's about 30 degrees, and indeed it's 03. Uh -huh. yeah. 
I mean, incredible clarity, isn't there? You've just got to be careful what you're doing in the back garden these days because uh, <laughs> these things are flying around all the time. Now, if you go to the junction of the runways and go due east, you'll come across the world's biggest parabola. There it is. So once again, how big is it? We'll get the ruler out and measure it. Let's do it in metres. Hmm. 60 metres along, so it's still quite large. Uh, what you can't do is tell how high it is, but it's about 10 metres tall. Right. So it's quite big. Um, and it used the um, reflective properties of a parabola, um, which, uh, as you know, um, anything coming in in a straight line like this will focus just here. And that's where you put the recepting. Um, I mean, parabolas are so important, but uh, there's very little in it in, in the curriculum, and the focus doesn't appear in any of the British curriculum, I don't think. Um, nor does the ellipse. If you no look way. through the a, a, a level and GCSE in the UK, ellipse isn't mentioned once, which is crackers. Yeah, not until further maths A level, and so, but we can Even opt up. Well, yeah, 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 might uh -huh. be there a little bit in the coordinate geometry. Mm. But these things were built again in the 30s. Um, because they thought if they had the, uh, this system they could actually hear the aeroplanes before they could see them and they assumed that the enemy was due east and if you run this due east you do in fact come to Berlin so that's about right mm. so lots of possibilities are on Google Earth I don't know if anybody listening would like to make another suggestion as to what we might look at Are you able to see uh, curved paths as well? I mean, you just did a straight path, so maybe is it possible to like trace around the parabola? I don't, I don't know. I've never, never tried that one. It's that is a thought. Um, mm. As far as getting the parabola somewhere else, then you want to have a system of being able to screen grab. Mm -hmm. Wrong way. Ah. I'm holding shift down as I do that because the Google Earth, if you just keep zooming, it it flattens out and, and takes you right down onto the ground. You're right. Yeah, you're it's very right. helpful. Mm. So, um, how do you do this? Well, if you go to the search, you can't see what I'm doing down at the bottom. Down at the very bottom left of your screen, and go to a snipping tool, mm. or I'm going to use snag it, which is the same thing. Now Snagit enables me to grab that right. and copy. Yeah, I can see that. So those of you who know about Autograph, um, here's a new page and right click. Oh, I didn't, there's one stage I didn't do, I didn't uh, select it and copy. There we are, right, so copy now it's copied it. and paste image. Mm. There it goes, double click. Make it a bit transparent so you can see the things behind. And don't scale image with axes because I'm about to rescale because I want equal aspect. Now, if I hadn't done that, the image would have been squashed up. Now, what I love about these things, here's a, an image off the web. It's a parabola, uh, but it's not the usual way up, is it? Uh, normally, uh, when you do y equals x squared, it's the other way up. So this is going to be something like x equals y squared. So you wouldn't want this to be the first time you've uh, ever seen an x equals parabola. So make that you know, lesson or two before so that they're familiar with the, the possibility. So right click and x equals, um, it's going to be something like ky squared, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And I want it to go slowly because I want to click OK. And now that's very interesting. I'm going to pause. What you'll notice is that the value of y is the independent variable that's going along here. And let's get the pen out. Now, the pen is fabulous. If you don't know about the pen, what I've got here is a, um, a tablet. When I show you my TSM resources page, I'll show you how to get it organized. But basically, what we want to do is, is discuss, you know, where is this, this curve going to go? Uh, well, if y is the independent variable, so if y is negative 2, negative 2 squared is 4, so it's going to go through here. Mm -hmm. Minus 1 squared is 1, 
then the origin and then 1 squared is 1. We could probably have done with a little bit more transparency, but there we are, I get the idea. Um, and this is a great teaching technique because this is done by discussion. People are, just make, are just suggesting where these little circles should go. Then you let the brakes off and see how you got on. Now the way uh, Autograph does its constants, it's slightly different to the other programs. Uh, you use a constant controller. But the great thing about this is that you can vary not only the value but also the step. And I'm a great fan of getting people to think about something before you press any buttons. If I'm going to press that this button, K is going to get bigger. Do I want K to get bigger or smaller in order to get, get this curve to fit this parabola? Answer, smaller. There we go. Mm -hmm. Now, it overshoots, so you can reduce the step and come back. That's where this is so, so much better than a slider bar. And there is, that's pretty good going, isn't it? That's really good from an image. Just, uh, it is. Just from an image off the web. Mm -hmm. So uh, now I'm going to put a point. I'm going to point mode. I'm going to put a point on here. And I'm going to put a, uh, a horizontal line to represent the sound coming in. And I'm also going to draw a normal. Because this sound is going to be reflected in the normal to come down here. OK, so the way to do that is to put a point on here and reflect that point in the normal. Transform reflection. Fabulous. So now I'm going to select this point and this point and right click, put a line through it. Now, by the way, that's the way this program works. You select the um, object first, then the operation. Joshua uh, Desmos is the other way around. You have to choose the operation first, which means all possible operations have to be made visible or available in some way. Mm. which is why uh, Jojoba has a command line interface for all the rest. It has icons for some of them, not all. So, um, anyway, let's move this point around and see, aha, something pretty remarkable is happening. Uh, now, this is very much something which is not in the syllabus as taught in the UK, but it don't know what it ought to be, because uh, there are parabolas everywhere. If you think of uh, um, aerial systems for satellite and headlights and cars, all sorts of things, they keep mm. cropping up. So now I'm going to get the pen again and just make it a little square around here because that's where I want to sit with my headphones and listen to what's going on because look at this. I move this down here. doesn't matter where the sound hits the parabola, it goes to the same point. That that is called the focus. That's so cool. And if you want to set that up as an animation, of course you can. Let's just animate from minus 3 to 3, that would do. Wow. I mean, that typifies for me the perfect use of technology. There's a, a picture of something you've just found on the web and uh, you can fit a real parabola. Of course it's parabolic. Now some people say, ah, oh, well it needn't necessarily be parabolic. It could be elliptical. And uh, I've also done some studies. You, you can actually fit an ellipse to this quite well and it works pretty well, but it doesn't have a focal property. Hmm. It's a bit of a mess here. So you definitely want that. And uh, old Churchill was keen on these and he thought he'd, he'd build these all the way down the south coast. Luckily, somebody invented radar in the meantime, and so uh, <laughs> it wasn't necessary. But this is the only surviving one. There's one in Malta as well, mm. near Nashar, mm -hmm. if you want to go hunting for that. That's amazing. I mean, I've, I do this in physics with um, light and uh, reflectors, but that's it's actually not in the syllabus either. Um, but I show it to them, and uh, yeah. but seeing, but that's all like all the rays in a diagram. It's not dynamic, but what you made it dynamic. You've actually seen mm. yeah, uh, that's, that's it's alive. Yes, I, I would say if, if it doesn't move, it's not so interesting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what I'd like to do is show people around. I don't know what the time scale is for this, by the way. I told we keep going till midnight, or 
Uh, we're okay. We typically do these for an hour, and depending on the engagement. Uh, so everyone so far is just like, "Wow, this is awesome!" So, but uh, <laughs> but if you do have any questions um, based on what we just seen about Google Earth Pro, uh, please do to keep them coming, and um, mm. yeah, we look at the next thing, and then if whatever question you have, just put it in the chat window, and I'll put it out there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'll just go back. I'll, I'll just show a couple of things that are new to Autograph because some of you may not be familiar with that, uh, and then we'll have a look at the TSM resources, the portion of the screen. Uh, for example, if I put a point here, I want to draw a unit circle because the unit circle and trig is one of those topics that comes up from time to time. Circle with radius one. I, I but click OK. What's going to happen? Have a look at those scales. They're not equal scales, are they? Mm. That's bigger than this. So it's going to be an ellipse, which is not very helpful. Luckily, there's a button up here to rescue the situation, equal aspect mode. Right. There you go. Uh, I'm going to zoom once. Now, zooming in Autograph only happens when you click, which is much better than uh, other systems, which just have these two buttons, and, you, and it, only, it always zooms wherever the center of the screen is. So I'm going to zoom once just to tie it up a bit more there, and I'm going to move that across. Now, there's one really significant thing that's new in Autograph, which is that every object has attributes. So here's this a point here. This actually has three attributes. It has its x-coordinate, which is there, its y-coordinate, which is here. But because it's a point on a circle, it also has the angle that it's gone round from the origin. So it's got three attributes. So um, if I select it, there's a really useful feature called the XY attribute point. I can create a new point based on the attributes of, of whatever I've got selected. Mm. So click on that, and I'd like the X coordinate to be the angle, and the Y coordinate to be the Y, which it already is. So the X is going to this angle here, and it's in radians. This whole exercise doesn't work in degrees because you're going to have hundreds along here, and only one here it doesn't fit. Mm. Um, so let's have a look and see, it, it's T is about that, so it's going to be about here, and then the Y, so it's, I think it's going to produce a point about there. This is the autograph way, always try to predict what's going to happen before you press a button. And if it turns out to be somewhere completely different, then you've learned from that. So what happens if you move this around? Ah, look at that, isn't that fantastic? Oh, that's so good. Um, it would be nice, I think, if we had uh, pi scale. So let's have a look at this. Uh, you can set the x to be pi by 4, pi over 4, and the pips, or perhaps no, the numbers in pi by 2, I think. And let's have the pips in pi by 4. That's better. Okay, now another really, really handy thing is the idea of a locus. It sounds a bit um, difficult because it's Latin and, you know, help. But a locus is, is if you've got one point that is constrained in some way, then you have another point that relates to it, then whatever happens to this, it will make this happen. And so if I'm going to select those two, and everything's done with the right click, create. Um, those of you who are not familiar with the new version of Autograph, um, these are all sub-menus because mm. the right-click menu is getting a bit large. Um, so we now go to Create Locus. There we go, and uh, that's, that's more accuracy than we need. Let's do that. There it goes, and the lovely thing is you can move this around and see how it all fits. Nice. Dynamic. Right, one more thing with this before we move on to something else. I'm going to right click, put a line, a horizontal line through there, and a vertical line through there. Now I'm going to find the closest point from this point to this line. Right click, point, closest point. This point to this point, and right click, closest point. So what have we got here? Uh, this is the angle theta that we're talking about. So this, and because it's a unit circle, this length here is cos theta, or cos t. Mm. This length is sine t. So this length is sine t. So sine squared plus cos squared equals 1, does it not? 
Mm. So the length of this is going to be 1. Let's see if it actually is. Let's go to the line segment. Go from here to here and let go. Let's see what happens if we move this. Aha! Uh -huh. It's always 1, isn't it? Absolutely. I've never seen it like this, but it's so good. Isn't that lovely? Yeah. Um, and once again, the lockers applies to points and objects. So if I select that object and this point, this point is constrained. This is that. So right click, create locus, and let's go 16. Oh, isn't that pretty? Oh, wow. Oh, that's so cool. Animate lots two pi, it's all set. So lots of things are, are new, and I think um, you know if you are looking at, at different uh, platforms, the, the I think the hills of Genesis behind autograph is it's visual and, and things moving, and they're a very uncluttered screen. And okay, some people moan that there are too many options up here, but they are quite useful. Hmm. But the basic screen along here is uncluttered, nice and open, nice and colourful to start with, and you just select and right click. That's how it works. Hmm. Got some questions uh, on autograph oh. coming up already. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, uh, obviously we we know autograph, and quite a few of us who are in the La Salle circuit and UK education we know it. Um, but uh, Corina Merg never, never used autograph. Uh, I know it's free for La Salle subscribers. That is. Okay. I'll show you where to get it in just a second. Mm. And she's checking. But do students have to pay for it? I'm, I'm assuming no, because that's it's all. Yeah. No, <clears throat> we're very fortunate. I mean, the the story is that it started off with just a few lines of, of code in, on the BBC B all those years ago, <coughs> then converted to uh, the PC by a very very talented programmer, Mark Hatzel. And luckily, uh, when uh, LaSalle bought Autograph um, about a year ago now, they also took on Mark, which is fantastic. So the, the, the program lives on, and it's just about to be reborn in a web version so that it will run on everything. This, at the moment, runs on PC Windows and uh, runs beautifully, but then that's what it was written for. Uh, but the web version will run smoothly on all devices. He's trying his best to get it to work on the phone, but it's a bit challenging. <laughs> you know, it's a tiny screen. Um, but at least the, you know, the tablet version will look pretty good, and it'll work on a Mac too. Mm, I bet, yeah. No, it's, uh, uh, okay. oh, overall, would you say it's more student-friendly than GeoGebra? Again, Karina is asking that. Uh, I think I'm looking from the student's point of view. I, I, I wrote a paper recently at a big conference about that, about the user interface of the two systems. And uh, because in, in GeoGebra you choose the operation first, you have to have all possible operations available. Now they've got a, a, a number of, of geometrical ones, but anything else is command line, and you, they're, they're horrendous. You've got to learn what what the word is, you've got to spell it right, you've got to put all these parameters in. Um, I, I don't know. I, I've watched a lot of uh, teachers coming out of Georgia workshops, and they're they're quite befuddled. They, they reckon they could do it the next day, but the next week, because um, you've got to remember all these words, hmm. spell them right. So um, in autograph, you don't have to spell anything. It's all here on the right click. That's the plan. Um, let me show you how the um, GSM resources works. Mm. Again. Gaining new autograph fans all the time. Oh, well, that's good. Mm. <laughs> oh, it's up here, sorry. OK. If you're in autograph and you go to help, you go to autograph resources, F4. But if you're not in autograph because you haven't got it yet, I'll give you the address. So it's www.tsm technology for secondary mathematics, tsm resources.com. That's been the address for years. Mm. That all reminded me that I had a photograph taken about 15 years ago in the Middle East. <laughs> so I've used it now. Yeah. On this page um, you, you see at the top here 
click here to download the installer so you click on that and download for free now you do have to declare whether you're a student or a teacher if you're a network administrator you get an MSI file mm -hmm. <coughs> if you're a student or a teacher just say so but you, know, you do have to have an email um, but that's as far as it goes but it is used for logging in and then you set yourself up with a username or your email and password, try not to forget it because at the moment, even though I keep badgering for it, there isn't a forgotten password routine. But uh, I'm sure there will be one day. Right. Anyway, that, that's how it works. And then when Autograph opens up for the first time, I'll just close this down so you can see how it starts up. Hmm. Um, very importantly, there are two versions of the program. It's exactly the same code underneath. It's just that the standard level has no radians, no calculus, and it's a much simpler interface. Uh, but the advanced is the one that most people tend to want to use. But it's really useful to have this other version uh, for the juniors. Hmm. So that's how it starts. You've got the stats here. Um, nothing like enough software around for stats. That's such an important subject. Um, but you, know, the, you look at this group data, raw data, box of because probably distributions and so on. Two dimensions goes all the way from points to differential equations. And then 3D is just to die for. Um, and then you've got the complex numbers page so you can really explore the Argon diagram. That's neat. So tiers and resources, as I say, um, <coughs> you've got all the uh, legacy manuals. So it's all good stuff. It's, uh, it's all still applies to the current version. Hmm. And you've got three courses that, that have been run by LaSalle. A beginner's course, an intermediate course, and advanced course. This is the standard you are at running autograph rather than the standard of the mathematics. Now um, over here, I've done a whole load of... of videos over the years every time I do a, a good video they're nearly all on, on YouTube but you know you just click on one if you're interested and you've lost your time here's an example of uh, a velocity time situation and showing that the area under the velocity time graph is the distance traveled and we've got a variable point here which is showing you the area under the velocity time situation and up here we've got a point that has been generated from the x value of this and the value of the area so let's show how this works first of all this is a piecewise expression v is equal to 0 up to here 2t up to here 4 constant then 8 minus t down to here so a typical out and back velocity time graph if we double click on this you can see from the equation entry how it works. You just put commas between each of the uh, values. And then the startup options, because it knows it's a, a piecewise equation, it's giving the options as to where the first one begins and each intersection is followed by the last one. So it finishes at 10. The good thing about this piecewise function is that it is a function, so you can do things like work out areas and so on. Just need to put a point somewhere along here and then select, deselect the first one point, then this point. Now right click, it's quite a big menu sometimes, it's off the bottom. So don't forget the right click menu is duplicated in the object menu, which is quite useful when making videos like this. So go to create, because it doesn't fall into any of the other categories, create area, then the area dialog, uh, the, the one that produces a nice pretty pattern like this is Simpson's rule, but there's a general one as well. Rectangles, midpoint, trapezium, Simpson. So we do Simpsons with say uh, 15 divisions. That'd be enough. So that definitely is an object in its own right. It has a value, and so does this have a value as well. So I'm going to select this point here and the area, and then I'm going to use this feature here, which produces a new point based on attributes of objects that have been selected. And you can see that the uh, 
x value of this point here is the x value of the of the new point and the area is the other one. So the area at the moment, but two or three, so it's going to be a point up here somewhere. And there it is. And the lovely thing about this is that as, as it moves around, so you can see that it takes characteristic shape. When the velocity is a linear function, the displacement is a quadratic. When this is constant, that's going to be a straight line. Now, if you select this point and this point, we've got two points, one of which is constrained in a particular way, and the other one is a consequence of that, and that is perfect for create a locus. Off the bottom again, so object, create a locus, perfect. Are you ready? And then no, it's offering us from uh, minus there to that. That'll do fine. But you can change that if you like. And obviously putting on these extra lines uh, is an extra little bonus. But that's uh, a, a lovely way of just looking at how area and displacement and, vo and velocity and time are all linked up. So there we are. There's lots of videos like that, and they're all roughly five minutes, uh, which I think is about the attention span of most people to watch videos. <coughs> oh, that's <laughs> fantastic. I mean, um, I teach uh, physics and uh, both maths, so I think it's well worth uh, investing the time and learning autograph. Um, mm -hmm. I know you have all that CPD stuff on your website, so it's probably the question people will ask as well. How do I use this function? How do I use that function, etc. So. Yes, I mean, there's lots here, um, calculus and vectors. Uh, it's difficult to know what the audience is this evening, but um, you know, complex numbers, fantastic stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Corina's asking, is your paper available online? Uh, well, all these are. Uh, oh, the paper about the... Uh, oh, the GeoGebra, yeah, that's the... Oh, yes, the GeoGebra, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah. But I don't think it's on this page. Um, I will put it on this page, you've, you've prompted me. Mm. It's somewhere else at the moment. I think we've uh, definitely sold it to Karina because she's <laughs> so convinced <laughs> it is easier than GeoGebra. <laughs> so I've got to have one member at least. <laughs> well, there you go. Geodes have been around a long time and, and it, you know, it's, it's a good piece of work. Mm. So that's the, f the front page of my TSM website. Then uh, it's probably worth just a little bit of, a bit, bit of time looking at each of these. The integer lists, just a bit of fun really, but. Um, <coughs> I used to have access to the code that generated these things, the first 2,000 prime numbers. There are an awful lot of them, aren't there? Whereas the first uh, powers of two, those of you who watch Who Wants to Be a Millionaire know what doubling is all about. You know, it suddenly gets pretty dramatic. And so it does with ordinary numbers. Uh, one of the things we often do in that lesson about establishing e to the x you plot, you plot y equals 2 to the x, what does y to the x look like? Well, we only, only ever look at this little bit here. Mm. But if you just extend it, goodness me. Um, let's just have a look at that for a second. So if we do, no, I'm in the complex numbers page. Here we go. Uh, we do y equals 2 to the power of x. Um, this is a, a really good example of the slow plot being so, so useful. So we'll click OK and pause it and get the pen out and say, right, what is 2 to the minus 2? What is 2 to the minus 1? Uh, and what is 2 to the 0? Well, anything to the power 0 is 1. Mm. Do you see the sort of pedagogical advantage of this? Uh, 2 to the power 1 is 2, and so on. So then when you let the brakes off and it goes through those points, there's really good learning. Oh, that's so cool. It's very important that you don't have all the fun. Um, when when the Geometer Sketchpad first came out, I was really excited about it, so I put it up on the, on the screen, and I drew a triangle, and I found all the centres, and, and uh, I said, look, those three are in a straight line. It's called the Euler line. And the kids said, yeah, OK, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. No, they've got <laughs> to. Didn't mean anything to them, because they weren't doing it. Yeah, they have to it. do it, yeah. It's one of the reasons why I do online. Uh, I, we were talking early in the green room, but uh, I stopped teaching in person. Um, because online I was just getting on a bit paper they they do the interaction they do most of the they I put them in the driving seat and they kind of fumble around and do this yep. and that uh, and that's when they, it's their own discovery isn't it so they really own yeah. that discovery yeah 
Um, okay, let's go back to where we were. So powers of two. I mean, you know, in in this situation here, if I was to keep going, let's zoom out and see what happens. Oh God, it gets big, doesn't it? Yeah. So to relate that to this, I think is very important. Um, we all started off as a single cell, and uh, my understanding is that there are only trillions of cells in the human body. So at some point because the human cells double and double and double and double. Most of them die, but luckily the ones that don't die are the ones we need, so it's, it's good. Mm. Uh, Mersenne primes uh, is another whole lovely area of mathematics. Um, two to the power of a prime number minus one is another prime number, but not always. And of course that's a huge challenge to mathematicians, when, is, when isn't it? Um, of course there's lots of gadgets on the um, on the web to able to, to do factorization like this. Um, you know, this number here factors to 233110320089. How do we do that? Well, there's the prime factorization calculator. Mm. Someone has gone to the trouble of writing that, so I've just linked to it here. Uh, the thing that really puzzles me is how on earth did Mr. Euler know that that was a prime number? You know, if you think in 1772, he had no calculating gadgets whatsoever, it's all mm. brain power and the doubling process. It's crazy, yeah, manly. Yep. But he did it, and luckily we weren't looking for the next one because there wasn't another uh, one for a long time, two to about 37. These have all got factors, so these are not Mersenne primes. So the next one is not until two to the power of 61 minus one. Somebody proved it in 1883. Crikey, how did they do that? It's crazy. Um, then, in the 20th century, they had to turn the handle calculators. And so that was possible, but then their wrists got a bit tired, and uh, <laughs> most of it's done by computer. And these numbers get giant, of course. And, you know, the students are well, perfectly entitled to say, well, what's the point of all this? Um, and the point of it is all to do with codes and security. Because um, one of the ways of doing a secure trans transfer of information on the web um, is to say, okay, um, I'm going to give you the first number of a prime number, and then, I, then, I, then the other person is going to multiply it to another one and get an enormous calculator. But only the bona fide person on the other end knows one of the numbers, so you can divide it out and get the answer. Mm. Um, anyway, it would just take a month of, uh, or a year of Sundays to uh, solve it otherwise. So these numbers are huge, but that's just a time, that's a tiddler. Look at this. Now, the last one they found was 24 million digits long. Oh. That's just the digits. So that's those. Uh, Pythagorean triples I've been quite intrigued by as well. Because <coughs> there is a formula for them, but it doesn't get all of them, but it gets all the ones that matter. Um, and here it is, the factor is, you've got three, four, five coming up lots of times. When it's in brackets, it means it's a multiple. So 15, 20, 25 is indeed a Pythagorean triple, but it's a multiple of 3, 4, 5. And it's one of the ones that uh, just by incrementing n and m doesn't work. Mm. A to be m squared minus n squared, b to be 2mn, and c to be m squared plus n squared. And you fiddle around with that, and the geometry of it is quite interesting. But there we are. It does work pretty well. So all those black ones... And I've worked it out. I've, I've got a spreadsheet here if anybody's interested in, in all this information so you can play around with it. Hmm. So that's the integer lists page. The images page. I'm very pleased with this. Why do we learn about pentagons and hexagons and goodness knows what? So here are lots of buildings and structures in biology that are in polygon form. So you've got the pentagon here. You've got a Pentagon building here in South Africa. Now this one's interesting because the, the salt desert hexagons in Atacama uh, Desert, they end up sort of in a hexagon because if you have three objects, uh, three lines that meet, uh, the simplest way is to have 120 degrees in each. And that's how you get the... Obviously it's not perfect, but considering how it's made. And the same goes for the giant causeway hexagons. It just happened when the molten metal, uh, molten rock, cooled, and it, it split a, it split apart, and it just broke in the the way that gave it the easiest 
passage, mm. which is how to try to squeeze on each. Um, all these images, uh, you just click on it, and you get a bigger version. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, it's the Northern Ireland one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Northern Ireland. Yeah. Mm. Uh, we've just been there, of course. Uh, honeycomb, yeah, hexagons. Even the bees know about hexagons. Um, this is an extraordinary uh, building uh, in Alsace. It's a village. And that's an octagon. This is the octagon lantern in Ely Cathedral. Beautiful structure. Mm. And this place, Palmanova, incredible town. Um, I've done some analysis in autographs, so I'll just do that, show that. But here is the town. Um, it's got three roads coming in. It's got one, two, three, four, five. That's a hexagon in the middle. But by the time it gets to the end, it's a nonagon. Mm. And this this town does exist. It's called Palmanova in, in northeast Italy. Check it out and have some fun with it because uh, you know, the geometry of it is extraordinary. I had no idea about this one. I've been to many of your workshops, but I just haven't clicked <laughs> on that and on this one. Here uh, it is. Uh, here's the YouTube uh, image of it. Google Earth, rather. So here's this road coming in here. Here's the road coming in here. The road coming in here. Those roads are at 120 degrees. And then at some point it changes from hexagon to nonagon. So there's an interruption to the buildings. That's nonagon, isn't it? Mm. So it's only mm. hexagon mm. model. Then you've got the ramparts as well. Those are nonagons. They look beautiful. So anyone can go on Google Earth Pro and just literally type that oh, yes. town name and, and do their own journey, and that's what's makes it really exciting because you, you yes. can go, go on Google Earth or Google Earth Pro on your desktop and so get playing with it. Yeah. If I click on that, this is the Google Maps of it. And if you zoom out, you can see where it is. So here's, here's modern roads down here, but this, this town obviously was built um, in a certain era. If you zoom right out, you'll see where it is. All right. There's Venice, another mm. totally extraordinary place, built on a marsh. I mean, how do they do that? It's extraordinary. Yeah. Now the images page continues with parabolas. Uh, you can have a lot of fun with um, with uh, the, this, this little game here when there's angry birds. You're trying to get it to go down here and down here, and it is just possible. There's an autograph file that goes with it. Mm -hmm. I don't remember how this works now. Oh, oh I see. You're, you're, you're varying V and phi is the angle and V is the velocity. Mm. Mm, the launch angle, as I call it. Let's go to the constant controller. Can't change anything about V, but V we can. We can't change G rather, but it, it just increasing the velocity. And then change the angle down a bit. Because when you you actually play this game, that's exactly what you're doing. You're, you're pulling the, uh, the elastic back and letting go, but you're letting go at a certain angle and, and at a certain velocity. So these are the two things you are definitely varying. And if we do take this down here, that should just about do it. Obviously, this isn't a proactive image. Unfortunately, it would be nice if it was. <laughs> you could actually play the game. Yeah. You get the idea. Um, so that's another one. And here's a lovely parabola. Uh, this uh, this um, square in, in Spain uh, is a lovely example of the vanishing point, of course, because these lines, if you continue them, uh, we'll meet at a point. And here they are, this is the idea of the vanishing point. Just take those lines and... So what would happen if you went over there and stood there? 
Well, it's a bit like trying to find the end of a rainbow, isn't it? Uh, it just doesn't exist, of course. Mm. From this vantage point, it does. And the lovely thing about the vanishing point, of course, is it wasn't known about until about the 15th century. So if you look at uh, early paintings, th this trick doesn't work of uh, joining up the point of equal height. That's beautiful. Uh, that's always good fun to do, to fit a parabola through this. This, of course, is a real-life example that this complete idiot decides to allow himself to be um, blasted out of a cannon. <laughs> and look, it's not a very big net. So if he misses that, that's goodbye. Mm -hmm. But it's the centre of gravity of the human that actually runs the parabola. Another parabola, a, scat a satellite dish. Uh, well, we've done that already. That's the one in Malta. Yeah, we saw that. Ping pong. Um, there's another paper here all about um, why it is when you throw javelins and shot puts and things like that, you don't throw them at 45 degrees, you throw them at 31 degrees. Um, that, that's quite a long process, but you have a look at the paper and have a look at these autograph files, it's all explained. Mm -hmm. um, this is nice, there's a picture of Big Ben and the autograph file here. Here we have Big Ben and we have T being varied. As you vary T, let's increase the step. Thanks. Now, those are two vectors and T is the angle to the um, horizontal origin, which is here. So what's the formula that makes this go round and this go round correctly? And <coughs> I'll spare you the effort, but if you want to have some fun with this in your own time, there it is. Mm. Neat. That is GCHU, GTHQ quarters in uh, Cheltenham in England. Bit of a target, eh? <laughs> yes, on, you can see all of them on Google Earth probably these days anyway. Yeah, of course you can. Yeah. Um, now, uh, not everybody knows that a rainbow is a circle. A lot of people think it's another parabola. Mm -hmm. It is possible to go up in an aeroplane and actually see the complete circle. It's quite rare. Oh, that's nice. So how do we fit a circle into that? Put a circle, put a centre, around about there. And let's put another point here. Select, select, right click, create a circle, center and point. Aha! That problem again. Double click, don't scale, that's good. Equal aspect is here, that's better. And now we've got that. If you're interested, uh, the equation exists as well. Mm. Right. Then we've got some miscellaneous ones. Um, sadly, for the European football they're just about to do, this ball has been dropped. It was a really nice little mathematical exercise watching these pentagons and hexagons charging around the field. Yeah. They've gone for a much smoother ball now which doesn't have any patterns, yeah. which is a great pity. That's a great exercise. Yeah. That, um, um, oh, here's the Last Supper. And if you join all these points together, it doesn't work. It was, they didn't know about the vanishing point at that point. Mm. Whereas nature gets it right, if you put a line down here and put points all along here and reflect, you get an exact replica over here. So good old nature gets it right. Mm. Lots of shell and so on. 
five runways at Schiphol, as you can have some fun there with the numbers. So um, we're getting on with time, so we're going to stop shortly, but I'll just do a, a quick zoom through the other pages. So we've had a look at images. Uh, the data, there's, there's just so much data floating. I heard an amazing statistic the other day that the amount of data being entered on the internet today is equal to all the data that has ever been entered until yesterday. In one day. In one day. So, we well, can imagine, what's Google doing with all our photographs and, and everything else? It's all up there somewhere. Mm. Goodness knows where. All those um, tweets. But, you know, th these, these, these are all sites that deliver Excel data. These are Excel files themselves and autograph files. These are statistical information ones. Uh, this is all about teaching problem stats and these are more tutorials about Excel because I think Excel is a very important tool. I think everybody should learn how to manipulate uh, spreadsheets mm. as part of their mathematics courses but not everybody has time for that. And those who are teaching in England, um, these are the Ed Excel, this is the large data set and this is how Autograph spreads itself around through the various services. Um, data pages is great, so just spend some time looking at that. And all these files can be loaded straight into Autograph. Uh, the, the math links. We've got professional resources. Hangity Maths, Kangaroo Maths, and, and all these things. Mm -hmm. um, resources from busy teachers. These are teachers. Uh, these are actually, in some ways, lots better than some of these because they're teachers are in the classroom getting inspiration from uh, the, the teaching process. Mm. For example, Mark Dawes, a good friend of mine, and he does this incredible site uh, called Quibans. Uh, and it is an acronym for something here, a question inspired by a news story. Wonderful. So every time you look in, it's something else. Really, really good. Um, but obviously, if I, if I start showing all these, I'll be here till midnight. As yeah, I no, suggested I I would. <laughs> really Regular good. bloggers, Good old Craig, Andrew Jeffrey, Joe Morgan and Colleen Young. They, they pump stuff out absolutely on the button every week. Mm. Lots of stuff for overseas and lots of links to uh, software and so on. And then the final page is entertainment. Now, mathematics and entertainment are two words you don't normally see in the same sentence. And yet, there is tons and tons of it. Um, Games here, numbers here. I, I was just teaching my grandchildren how to how to win at NIM, and blow me, they get me every time now. <laughs> I can't right. remember the rule. <laughs> Great game. Um, lots of art stuff. Uh, lots of videos. History of the subject. You know, if you're doing a, a lesson on Pythagoras, for goodness' sake, who was this guy and when did he live? About 500 BC. Crikey, mm. that's a long time ago. Um, but it's all the click away, so just take every opportunity to bring the world into your classroom. And lots of primary stuff here. Mm. Um, Vaiha, I just, just can't resist showing, she's fabulous. Um, she does, she chats away on, on making shapes and things. It's a so say you just moved from England to the US and you've got your old school supplies from England and your new school supplies from the US and it's your first day of school and you get to class and find that your new American paper doesn't fit in your old English binder. The paper is too wide and hangs out. So you cut off the extra and end up with all these strips of paper. And to keep yourself amused during your math class, you start playing with them. And by you, I mean Arthur H. Stone in 1939. Anyway, there's lots of cool things you can do with a strip of paper. You can fold it into shapes, and more shapes. Maybe spiral it around snugly like this. Maybe make it into a square. Maybe wrap it into a hexagon with a nice symmetric sort of cycle to the flappy parts. In fact, there's enough space here to keep wrapping the strip, and then your hexagon is pretty stable. And you're like, I don't know, hexagons aren't too exciting, but I... Anyway, uh, we could watch those forever. But uh, she's amazing. So, there we go. I, I think um, I ought to stop, really. I could keep going all night. Uh, that's always the problem with I think so many things to talk about but one thing above all else I just wish I was 25 again because boy aren't you lucky all your teachers have these amazing resources 
to liven up the classes. Well, as always, my mind is completely blown, despite having gone to two of your workshops already you know, before. Um, there's just so much, and uh, your generosity in sharing it freely is, is incredible, mm. uh, and continuous commitment to like finding new stuff and sharing it. Uh, we've had a few more comments, and uh, I'll just go through some of them. Um, yeah, um, Corina Murga, I think she's uh, based in the US, definitely sold to the idea. Um, Dina Grimes has tuned in. I think you know Dina from uh, the conference circle. Uh, LLJ, yes, thank you for uh, that comment. Um, yeah, Karina's just asking, do you run regular workshops on math teachers? Sorry, I missed the beginning when you were introduced. Um, I think the answer is um, yes. Yeah, yeah I, I, I do them way through uh, La Salle at the moment, as the math comp series. Yeah, they always do one there. Mm. I think but Corina is on the teacher CPD. All over the countryside, so it's just it's different now, isn't it? <laughs> mm. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an international conference, and the the next one is. Uh, are you presenting the next one, Matt's Kong twenty six? Uh, almost certainly, yes. Yeah. So uh, that's in July the tenth. So for anyone interested, that's a live one. But you've got plenty of videos on your YouTube channel and your page of very specific things. Anyway, yeah. certainly have yes. Mm. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention, if, if, if you can just give me another couple of minutes, which is um, on the front page, if you scroll down a bit, uh, this is the one I recommend. It's, it's made by Wacom and it's Bluetooth, which means there's nothing to connect. You just uh, use it. Yeah. Um, but there is a slight little problem here. Important Windows users using Wacom tablet properties in the control panel you need to go to mapping and untick use windows link it's a bit annoying that, it, that that's necessary and and i'll show you how that works mm -hmm. if you go to the uh, magnifying glass the top at the bottom right hand corner and put in wa it comes up with walk out oh, back on yeah. i've got mine here properties and here they are and if you go to mapping and untick. At the moment, I'm mapping part of the screen. That's what I wanted it to do. Mm -hmm. um, and the way it works, well, you've seen it working in Autograph. Now, if I take Windows Link on and put go to here, it sort of doesn't work perfectly. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's working better than it normally does. Normally, it sort of judders a bit to start with, but if you take it off, it certainly is absolutely fine. Mm -hmm. um, so this is one thing to worry about. Mm. Aren't, aren't many problems, but once you've got one going, they are a great tool. And of course, you can take it around to the kids, and they can have a go. And yeah, yeah. We were saying that uh, one. I mean, I've been using these for about five odd years. I've got my Wacom that's five years old, and uh, this one is plugged in. And I, I also use Windows, so that's one of the first things I have to do: switch it off. Uh, got my tutees to buy some of them to buy it, and, and they they really love that control that that's well, that yeah. initial stage where your writing looks like rubbish for the first hour of it and yeah then it's it not just, good is it uh, but the little, the little toggle here um mm. that that's that's good that gives you a right click oh yeah top one and the bottom one is a double click saves mm. you hitting twice mm. but yeah as with technology it's well there's a learning curve with anything right you have to immerse yourself into it just like the children do they just kind of swim around battle it and then figure out what works for them um, with the graphics tablet it's exactly that it's totally worth that kind of first hour of just getting used to it and hand eye coordination um, yeah so this this definitely I, I've seen you use the graphics tablet with the in the classroom situation in the mm. conference with the um, Bluetooth and just walk around it and then annotate that's just just very very cool uh, brilliant uh, Got lots of uh, yeah, lots of excitement and comments, and uh, make sure you don't delete this recording or mistake. No, this recording will be there uh, on my channel. I'll, I'll send, I'll give you a copy as well, Douglas, and you can good, upload good, it good. on your channel and so uh, it, it'll be there. And um, well, I'll, I'll put that paper up about the inter user interfaces. People can have a look at that. And yeah, I have to put up with me playing the piano for ten minutes at the end of it because that's what they wanted me to do at this conference. <laughs> have a ten-minute piano interlude. So. Right. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so I've got a guitar amp and <laughs> you've got a piano. Come and, come and join in. <laughs> yeah, we could just have a jam. Yeah, I'm actually um, 
playing a little music set for Matt's Conf 26 on the Friday night for the social. So um, very good. Um, and we got. Did you um, do that at the last one? I was there the last one. Yeah, we got uh, Lloyd William Jones doing a set. Uh, if you're interested in one, yeah, you could join in the party. Yeah, we could, there's, mm. uh, there's no <laughs> there's no limit at the moment. So. Um, mm, but we're trying to get one of the great things about these online conferences is because we are from home we can do the thing that we want to from home without too much kind of um, arranging and, but yes we did yeah. for the ATM conference we had a musical evening and that was good fun yes yeah, so I've jo- I just recently joined it actually ATM so that's uh, yeah for next year I look, really look forward to you should so. yeah Mm. The choir, we had uh, 20 singers, and it was one of those ones where we had 20 pictures and, and they were all singing away in our various houses. <laughs> right. It worked out quite well. But it's no, a lot of work putting yeah. those together. Yeah, no, it is. Yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, we'll have synchronize a... the sound and the picture. It's, it's quite mm. a lot of work. Yeah, yeah, no, tell me about it. I do that. Uh, that's how I s- partly as well. Just good with the technology. I've battled through it for the last two decades in like venues, high pitched feedback and bandmates and monitoring and God knows what. Uh, cables and the dark. Uh, yeah, playing gigs at 11 o'clock at night, 12 o'clock at night after a few pints with all the technology going on. It's like, um, anyway, I could I have a habit of distracting my speakers with music. Uh, I've done that many times. but. <laughs> Um, but yeah, once again, uh, thank you so much for your time. Um, and uh, so, if, if anyone has questions, uh, this is on Twitter and YouTube, etc. Do keep them coming, and we'll take take them and answer uh, any any that we can. So fantastic! I'm gonna hit the stop streaming button, and then we can just have a quick chat, and we can finish off. So uh, do a, just a very quick bye bye to everyone. I'll just go do a quick wave, and then okay, we can stop there. <laughs>